It took 60 years for the nation to build a World War II memorial. 60 years after the war, the more than 100 veterans from the Inland Northwest are now seeing this for the very first time. It's an emotional day as each one of them remember their own individual stories of what happened to them during World War II. We want to introduce you to one such individual. This man was a pilot of a B-17 bomber. The Yellow Nose Boys knocked down every four-engine bomber that was down there, all 54 of them. They called it Black Sunday. And it was pilot Archie Staley who would have to fly back in after those yellow-nosed German Messerschmitts decimated the last American bombing run. It was tough to be brutally honest with his own crew about their next mission. The hardest thing to do was walk out and tell those six men that we were headed for, at that time we thought, a, a mission of no return because of the mission ahead of us, not, not one return. He and the crew took on scores of missions and would take a lot of fire from the enemy bent on bringing them down. One explosion, he remembers, nearly took out his eyes. And it scared me the worst. The flak <clears throat> hit the windshield. They're, they're divided half and half. And it just shattered that thing. It never come through. Since he could no longer see from his seat, the co-pilot had to take over. On another mission, a three-inch flak shell came bursting into the cockpit. It never exploded, but went right through the plane. And we were flying for loose formation, we relaxed. And all at once, the flak shells started hitting the plane and the plane went right up my co-pilot's back, eight inches back of his back, from the bottom and went out the top. They could see daylight right through the plane. Below them, a German flak train caught by surprise. So the enemy was launching everything it could as fast as it could in their direction. And the ran over a flak train sitting on a railroad track down there. They didn't have time to cut the fuses. They were just shooting the 88s or about a three-inch shell. The missions and the battles claimed many gunners and other crew members as well. But I lost the uh, navigator. He was flying, filling in for another crew, and a fighter, fighter plane took him head on in the stomach. In October 1944, he and another pilot followed a damaged and smoking third plane out of formation. But we, we stuck with him and he got down over Bratislava, which is a flak school in itself, and they shot him down. German fighters then frantically pursued the surviving two planes. The American pilots couldn't let those fighters get underneath them where the big planes were more vulnerable. The fighter planes were after us. So we dropped down in Yugoslavia, it's all mountains. And we flew those mountain peaks like that so they couldn't come up underneath you. They had to take the top turret and the tail turret. The massive gunfire from those two turrets and the maneuvering over the mountaintops worked. Both planes and crews made it to base. And for bringing back, saving two crews and 20 people, he and I both got the DFC. The DFC is this medal. The initials stand for the Distinguished Flying Cross. Decades later at home in what he calls his bragging room, he found out one of his former crew members, waste gunner Elmo Bart Bartlett, lived right down the road from him in Cheney. And I drove all those years I farmed, I drove right through Cheney about oh, once a month probably. And uh, I didn't know Bart was there. Now the two have less exciting missions together, like going fishing. Two true American war heroes who have won the right in the autumn of their lives to do the mundane with the greatest of pleasure. And coming up in our next report, we'll introduce you in depth to the waste gunner, Bart Bartlett. We'll have his story for you coming up a little later on. For now, at the World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C., I'm Randy Shaw, Krem2 News. And this next story also involves the Atlantic Front and the battle against Germany. Behind me, you'll see some stars on the wall. Each star represents 1,000 war dead. There are 400 golden stars on that wall. Now meet a man who did a lot of combat during World War II as a waste gunner aboard a B-17 bomber. His name is Bart Bartlett. His job was waste gunner aboard a B-17, a machine gun position right in the middle of the plane, and it was always open to the outside elements. Just a big hole in the wall about maybe four feet wide and two or three feet deep, it was colder than hell. Elmo Bart Bartlett jumped right into the war in Europe. His first mission came in July 1944, directly into the heart of Germany. The target was Munich. 
and as his bomber approached, he noticed a huge black foreboding cloud, so he notified the pilot. He says, Bart, we'll be there in just a few minutes, and we were. That was just flak bursting up there. His crew chief told him to stand on a flak suit to protect himself during battle, and he did just that on this mission. And over the target, it just felt like somebody would hit me on the bottom of my feet. It was hitting his feet like a baseball bat, and when he got back, he saw the jagged pieces of shrapnel that would have cut right through his body like butter. He still carries a piece of that shrapnel around with him today. Bart says he never let fear get the best of him after that, but he always gave thanks in prayer, and that calmed him down. We go on the bomb run, and I don't think I was the only one who would have to utter a small prayer to themselves. I think that I never flew with an atheist. The casualties in these B-17 runs were horrendous. He lost most of the 10 guys with which he originally trained. But the pilot, co-pilot, bombardier, navigator, and ball turret guy were flying that day, and they all four went down in one plane. Their, their, their plane got shot down. We lost five out of seven that day. Mission after mission, there was little time to think, except to notice at mealtime and the pre-dawn hours before a mission, there was always spam and jars of orange marmalade. That was, bad as, that was as bad as spam. It took me a long time to get to like spam. Fried, baked, boiled, raw, ooh, terrible stuff. He flew more than 50 missions against the German war machine, and just before Thanksgiving, 1944, he was on his last bombing run. One B-17 went down. After it exploded in midair, we saw nine chutes made out, got out of that one. Nine guys got out. The bombs were dropped over his final target. The air was black with flak and German fire trying to bring them down. And as the bombs from his plane rumbled and blew up on the ground far below him, Bart made one final gesture to the enemy before heading home. I had a roll of toilet paper in my little bag down under the machine gun. And I thought, May I don't know who he hit the target or not, but anyway, I threw that roll of toilet paper out just in case they needed it down there on the ground. Well, I didn't want it. I was going home. <laughs> and that was just one of the many, many stories of the 100 or so veterans that are visiting this World War II memorial today. What an emotional day it has been. At the memorial in Washington, D.C., I'm Randy Shaw, Crem2 News.